everybody, welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. Today's episode was inspired by a comment on the YouTube channel from Rudd Dog, a very faithful follower of the channel. Thank you so much, Rudd Dog. Always love seeing your comments uh, on all the videos. I appreciate that. But he was asking, we've been talking a lot about uh, the RFM 69 modules lately, and he had a great question, which was, which would I prefer to use for a sensor network? Say I wanted to set up a sensor network around my house or office or whatever it was, uh, commercial. Would I rather use Wi-Fi or would I rather use something like the RFM 69 module uh, to accomplish that? And what are the pros and cons of doing that? So on today's episode, I'm going to tackle that question a little bit. This is not going to be a super technical deep dive on this. I will provide some numbers on various things, but I just want to talk through sort of how I think about using Wi-Fi versus something like RFM 69 for setting up something like a sensor grid. Spoiler alert, the answer is, as it almost always is in things like this, uh, it depends. And so let's get into how we want to talk about comparing the two approaches. So first and foremost, let's talk about the difference between Wi-Fi and radio wave communication like the RFM69 uh, modules use. And the answer might surprise you, which is they're really very similar. It's The basic concept here is that you are taking data, modulating it to send it uh, on using radio waves. In the case of the RFM69 modules, that's in the hundreds of megahertz range, anywhere from 300 and some megahertz all the way up to 915 megahertz. In the Wi-Fi case, we're using the gigahertz range. Again, it's unlicensed radio band is what we use. It's this concept of there's unlicensed sections of frequencies that we can use um, that aren't taken by things like television and uh, specific radio stations and things like that. And so it's, it's called the unlicensed band and both of these modules operate in different segments of that unlicensed band to send data from one node to the other. Okay, so to start comparing them, I wanna briefly talk about price, because price, we're gonna ignore a little bit here, because when we wanna talk about comparing Wi-Fi versus RFM69, the Wi-Fi is much more nebulous. The RFM69, there's several versions of it, several different frequencies, and the price, depending on if you get knockoffs and certain things from China, they can go from $2 up to like five or $6, uh, depending also on how many units that you purchase. Wi-Fi is a little bit, different. It's, it's not thought of normally as just a buying an extra chip that you add onto your project. Although things like that do exist, like this little SB8266 module from LinkSprite. You plug it in and you can add Wi-Fi to your general microcontroller projects. This thing ran me, I think, $4. And so uh, this is more of like an apples to apples comparison if we want to compare the two protocols. But with Wi-Fi, we can also do things like whole platforms. You got the particle photon, Wi-Fi built in, Node MCU, Wi-Fi built in. Even the Raspberry Pi, um, the Pi Zero, I believe, has Wi-Fi built in. And so the cost range with Wi-Fi is going to be much different. And you can also get things in addition to Wi-Fi. Whereas, you know, with like a particle photon, you're not just getting Wi-Fi, you're getting a whole ecosystem and um, microcontroller on here as well that you can program and do other things with. Um, the RFM69 module, however, is literally just how to add a way to communicate from node to node to your project. So keep that in mind as we're comparing the two. The best apples to apple comparison would be if we just added Wi-Fi through something like the Link Sprite module versus uh, communication with the RFM69 modules. And so to compare these two approaches, I've chosen five criteria. They are range, speed, power, setup, and security. So let's go through each one of those for both of these approaches. So let's start with speed. And this is really just how fast can we send data from one node to the other. And so let's start with Wi-Fi. This is gonna depend on the network that you're using. A, B, N, there's all different kinds of Wi-Fi networks, but you can get speeds up into uh, the gigabit range. However, an important thing to remember, especially when you're using a chip like this or even a platform like the Photon is, the network is not going to be your bottleneck. It's going to be how fast your uh, microcontroller or platform can get data onto that transport pipe. And that's not gonna be up in the gigabit range. It's gonna be much lower than that. But generally speaking, Wi-Fi is going to have faster 
uh, transmit, uh, faster speeds. The RFM69, for the purpose of this comparison, we're gonna use the RFM69 HCW module. All the other RFM69s should be fairly comparable to this. Has a max uh, throughput of 300 kilobits per second. So again, if we're talking sensor data, those speeds are plenty to get a pretty good refresh rate and sending data across the network. Uh, whereas in general applications, if you wanna do things like audio and video, the RFM 69s are not gonna get that done for you. You're gonna need a faster protocol that you can get over Wi-Fi. Okay, next up is power. And hands down, the RFM 69 wins here. And so generally when you talk about power in wireless communication protocols, the real heavy eaters of power are the transmit and receive cycles. For Wi-Fi, you're looking at a transmit power of around, I'm gonna say power, current to transmit is of around 200 milliamps. Uh, receive is gonna be around 60 milliamps. And so that's how much current you're gonna draw when sending and receiving data on your Wi-Fi module. And that's very standard across, uh, you know, SB modules, uh, the Wi-Fi module that the Photon uses. Uh, 200 for transmit is pretty standard. The RFM69 modules, however, on receive, are only gonna use about 16 milliamps of power. Milliamps of power, that doesn't make any sense. Milliamps of current. And on transmit, because they're configurable, depending on what kind of range you would like to get, uh, transmit's gonna go anywhere from 16 milliamps up to 130 milliamps, so still much less than Wi-Fi. So if you're looking at realistically doing battery power for your sensor nodes, Wi-Fi almost is gonna kill you unless you have some sort of power harvesting like solar to recharge a battery. Um, otherwise, just standalone battery power, Wi-Fi is not really going to be an option. You're definitely gonna to wanna to go with something like an RFM69. Another consideration that you need to think about uh, when doing low power is that you're gonna do a lot more chatter with your Wi-Fi module than with your RFM69 because it needs to do things like negotiate with the router, DNS, get an IP address, check in, and things like that. None of that applies to the RFM69 modules. They connect, they send, and that's it. There's no other overhead there. And so that's another thing you need to consider when you're thinking about power consumption on your devices. Okay, next up is range. Now, again, the RFM69 is going to put Wi-Fi to shame. Now, you're gonna, your results are gonna vary, again, with obstacles and wall types and things like that, but generally speaking, on a Wi-Fi network, you can expect to get about 100 to 150 feet indoors and 300 or so feet open air outdoors. Not a lot of people have Wi-Fi outdoors because remember, the network's probably gonna originate from inside of a structure, and so if you wanna realistically extend that outside, if you have property, um, you need to have repeaters and things outside. And so that's the general range of Wi-Fi. The RFM69 modules, however, um, again, your mileage is gonna vary based on the antenna. However, just with a simple piece of wire as an antenna on the RFM69 module, you're gonna get somewhere between I've measured two to 300 feet through walls indoors um, and up to several hundred meters. I know I changed um, standards there. I went from feet to meters, but 500, what would that be? 500 meters, about 1500 feet uh, open air on these modules. However, if you get fancy with the antennas, uh, one user, um, configured this with a, a dipole antenna and was getting over a mile range on the RFM69. So again, uh, if you're looking for range, if range is a consideration in your project, the RFM69 is gonna give you more bang for your buck for sure. Okay, let's talk setup and configuration. And what I mean by that is, realistically getting one of these networks set up to provide, uh, again, we're talking about a sensor network. Um, to get these set up, you have to think about the network that you're using. And so in the case of Wi-Fi, um, all of your nodes are gonna have to have a connection to your router. And so the router that you have in your system is a big part of how well the system's gonna work. I've had routers in the past where I have to reset them all the time. And so if you, if you have a 
sort of a cheapo router, I think you're gonna have more problems with Wi-Fi. But if you have a really solid router that can handle lots of devices, you have to consider how you're gonna connect each node to that. That means that all of the nodes need to have your credentials to connect to your Wi-Fi network, unless you wanna run them under some sort of guest network, uh, which some of the newer routers can do for you. But if you have them secured, and so they have to authenticate to your router, all the nodes have to have that. Uh, those credentials and if they ever change you have to change them and so there's things like that to consider in the realm of wi-fi so you're talking over tcp with wi-fi as well and so uh, that can be a bit heavy for sensor data i mean it's an entire protocol of transmit but it does handle things like packet uh, recovery and retransmit and things like that and so um, generally speaking wi-fi is going to be a little bit easier to set up um, and configure up front uh, because it's more of a standard that people are familiar with. Now, when we talk about the RFM69, there's a little bit more involved. Again, because this is not a standalone platform like a Photon or Node MCU, it needs to be connected to some other platform like a microcontroller or even, you know, we could connect it to a Photon, give you RFM69 and Wi Fi. Just blow your mind there. Um, and so there's some more setup up front for this when you, because it has to be connected to something to control it. And then you need to configure one of them as a sort of gateway node. So you have to have a gateway involved with the RFM69. Um, but once you do that, it's, an, it's, it's its own separate network. So it doesn't rely on your internal Wi-Fi or anything. So if your Wi-Fi goes down, the RFM69 network is not going to be bothered by that. Whereas if you have all your sensors on your Wi-Fi network, that's certainly gonna be an issue. And so um, a little bit harder to set up upfront and maybe more difficult depending on the different platforms that you have in your network, but ultimately lower maintenance long-term because there's no concept of credentials that you need to change or rotate. Um, these do have encryption at the packet level that you can set up. And so um, again, a little bit harder to set up upfront, uh, but ultimately I think a little bit easier to maintain. And last but certainly not least, let's talk about security. Wi-Fi. So your Wi-Fi sensor network is only realistically going to be as secure as your router. If somebody breaks into the router, I think all bets are off at that point. They can get access to um, what the IP addresses are and then start pounding on your nodes um, and take the whole thing down at that point, um, packet sniff and things like that. Um, and so that's not to say that it's insecure, it's just as secure as your router is. Beyond that, it's as secure as you wanna make it, right? I mean, you can do um, things like HTTPS if you wanna do a heavier protocol to talk around and encrypt uh, at packet level, and all those things you can build on top of uh, the network. It's all running at the socket level. And so however much security you, wanna, you want to add at that point, well documented and you can do that to make communication very secure between nodes and out to the cloud. And so uh, that's what you get with Wi-Fi. It's pretty known. With the RFM 69s, they do have, as I mentioned, packet level encryption. And so you can encrypt the data going from one node to the other. Now, one thing I would like to point out and mention um, is the fact that because these are running on again, at radio frequencies, there aren't as many tools to hack a network like this. There are lots of, anybody with a computer and a, uh, or a laptop has access to lots of hacker tools to try and break into your network and sniff packets and things like that. It's very known and understood and hackable. There aren't many people, it's not impossible, you can certainly sniff for these packets. Again, it's just radio waves flying through the air. You can certainly do that, but there's not a lot of people that are just gonna have off the shelf things to come and sit near your house and sniff your sensor packets. Now, again, that may not be a, be a big deal to you. You may say, I don't really care if people know what the temperature in my shed is. And, and that's fair, but we need to talk about security. We don't talk enough about security and internet of things. And so I did wanna cover that. It's just a, one of those, if you think about it, these are probably gonna be much harder to hack just because there's not as much available out there in the, in the form of tools and knowledge to be able to hack a network that's running on RFM69. So that's sort of the basic security comparison between the two. Okay, so which one wins? Well, like I said before, it depends, right? It depends on what the criteria is for your project and 
you know, your knowledge level in certain things and how much uh, hassle you want to go through with setting things up. It really just depends. And I know that that's kind of a cop out answer, but it's true. That's it's just, it's true. Um, for me, if I was setting up a sensor network, which I would love to get around to, and I'd love to have sensors all over, out in my shed, in the backyard, and I don't even know what these would all do. Tell me the same temperature that it is outside. Um, you know, what's the temperature of my hot water heater and things like that. Um, if I were to do that, I would go with the RFM 69s. I think they give me more options as far as power. I could make them battery powered. Um, you can get up to year battery life on just a simple coin cell if you do things right and are very low power minded. Um, plenty of throughput, throughput for a sensor application. Um, but again, it's a little bit harder to set up. That would be my choice. But you know, Wi-Fi is a, is a well-known standard. It's gonna be a little bit easier to set up. You're gonna get faster speeds if that's important. Um, it's gonna cost you a little bit more though. And so that's, you know, again, I'm gonna call the RFM69 the winner in my book, but that doesn't mean that it's the right solution in all scenarios. Remember, always consider what the requirements of your project and your setup are. And again, what you have access to. Maybe you don't care about the cost and the, um, the power usage of the Wi-Fi modules, it's just simpler for you to set up. In which case, I think that's great. Set, set up a Wi-Fi sensor network. I think that'd be awesome. And so uh, that is going to do it for today's episode. Question of the day. Based on my rather long spiel there of Wi-Fi versus RFM69, which would you choose if you were setting up a wireless sensor network at your home or place of business and you wanted to set up a bunch of dropped nodes all around measuring different things, Wi-Fi or RFM 69s. I would appreciate it. Stick it down in the comments below. I appreciate so much everybody watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time.